Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for coming to us in your word, and we pray that as we hear you again today, that you would assure us that all the boulders and the stones and the rough places have been smoothed out through your son, Jesus. We pray that you would bless us and open our hearts to hear your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Dear friends of Jesus, our Savior, when I was a vicar and intern at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Royal Oak, Michigan, every Monday we would hold a service at a VA nursing home in downtown Detroit. Now, in order to get that nursing home, we traveled through some areas where the homes were boarded up. And that was unfortunate because the homes were big, once beautiful homes with this grand architectural style. And now all the houses and the yards and the streets were full of trash. It looked like a dump site for miles. But then one Monday, as we were going through that part of town, all the streets were clean, the yards were picked up, some of the boards had been removed, a whole crew of people came and cleaned up that area, making that neighborhood respectable again. And I found out later that day, it was because the United States the president of the United States was coming and making a tour, and so they cleaned it up to prepare his way. My guess is that they didn't want him to see the mess. Now, in our gospel for today, we read that John the Baptist is preparing the way for a king. Now, back in those days, as I was sharing with the children, when a king went around to tour his kingdom, he would send out men to remove stones, he would use men to level off the rough places and also to fill in the valleys to make a road smooth enough for the king to travel. However, John the Baptist, Baptist wasn't preparing for any ordinary king. He is preparing for the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He is preparing the way for King Jesus. He is making a royal highway so Jesus can come and gather his people and take them into his kingdom. And so John cries out, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John is a road crew of one. His mouth is a bulldozer preparing the royal highway for the king. And John's work was to prepare people's hearts with repentance for the one who is coming because he wants to establish his throne in the hearts of people. And it means stones and boulders of pride and self-righteousness need to be removed. They all need to be removed to make way for Jesus. Now what's interesting about this road construction, it begins in the wilderness and not in Jerusalem like you would expect. In fact, we read that John went into all the country around the Jordan preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. In Mark chapter 1, verse 5, it says, A whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. So why did he begin in the wilderness and not in the holy city of Jerusalem where the people are living? Because God has done great things in the wilderness, especially around the Jordan. When Joshua was leading his people into the promised land, the priests who were holding the Ark of the Covenant, which is the place where God dwelt with his people, when they stepped foot into the Jordan River, the water piled up and the people walked through the Jordan River on dry land. You see, as they crossed through the Jordan River, it was like them leaving behind the testing in the wilderness and walking into a land flowing with milk and honey. We also read that both prophets Elijah and Elisha both parted the the Jordan River. And Nahum, the Syrian, was cleansed from his leprosy by the prophet by washing himself in the Jordan River. 
And so the Jordan River was a place of cleansing. It was a place of leaving behind the old and receiving the new. It was a place of leaving behind death and receiving new life. And that's why John is in the wilderness. And he's baptizing. Did you notice, no one is asking him the question, what is this baptism all about? What does it mean? They're not asking him any questions about baptism. In fact, we read again in Mark chapter 1, verse 5, it says, confessing their sins, meaning those who went out to him, confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. And so why didn't they ask any questions? Because they knew that God did some amazing things through water and the Word. All throughout the Old Testament, God does amazing things with water. And not just providing water from a rock for the people to drink, but also cleansing and healing and saving. God uses water to prepare his people. And so John is preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And so we read in our text, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked road shall become straight, the rough ways smooth, and all mankind will see God's salvation. Not everyone was ready to meet Jesus, Messiah, and Savior. That's why John is in the wilderness. Isn't God's grace amazing? Not only does he promise to Adam and Eve that he's going to send a Savior, not only does he give all the signs of the Savior throughout the ages, but then God sends John to prepare the people because Jesus is coming. And as I said last week, the people's hearts were cold and callous. And some people, they were depending on their own self-righteousness and their own lineage, meaning they were children of Abraham to save them. And so what does John say to those people? He says, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children from Abra for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the tree, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. So who, are, who is this brood or this generation John is talking about? Now, they realize the coming wrath. That's why they go out to be baptized by John. But they are like sheep without a shepherd. They don't know how to escape the coming wrath. And that's why John says, produce fruit in keeping with repentance because fruits of faith, fruits in faith in the Messiah show the, show the genuineness of repentance. And so stones of pride were removed. Boulders, boulders of self-righteousness were bulldozed away and hearts of stone have been replaced with hearts of flesh. And for all those who believed in the one who is to come, in the Messiah, the one John was talking about, they were ready. They were ready for me, to meet King Jesus. In fact, again, that's why John is in the wilderness, pointing people to Jesus. When Jesus came out to John to be baptized by him, not because he sinned, he didn't sin at all, but he came out to be baptized to fulfill all righteousness, meaning he wanted to identify with sinners. John says, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, look, there he is. He's the one. He's the Messiah. He is the Savior. John was in the wilderness pointing people to Jesus so that they would put their faith in him. Now, when people heard John, they should have said, he's the one, he's the one who's been preparing the way for the Messiah, just as Isaiah prophesied about. Just as children get excited about Christmas and they can't sleep, the people should have been up and jumping up and down saying, he's the one, the one Isaiah has been talking about. 
And if they were confused, thinking that John was the Christ, after hearing John, there should be no doubt at all. Because we read in Luke chapter 3, verses 15 and 16, the people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Christ. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Again, he is the one who is coming, the Savior of the world. Now, John's message was not just for the people living in his day. John's message is also for us today. However, John is not preparing us for Jesus' first coming. That already happened. John is preparing us through God's word for his second coming. Again, that's what the season is all about. The Advent season is all about preparing our hearts for Jesus. So the question I have you is what boulder or boulders are in your path? What boulder continues to trip you and trap you? What boulders in your life seem so big that you aren't enjoying the presence of God? What boulders in your life are so big that you can't see on the other side of what God is doing in your life right now? Or you can't, you have a hard time believing in the promises that God gives you that how he is going to live your life. What boulders get in the way. You see, God has called us to repentance. God has called us to repentance, repent of our, our sins, and to rely on His strength and His power. It might be that you're struggling with self righteousness, it might be that you're struggling with pride. We've all been there from time to time. We go into the wilderness of sin alone, we live, we live as if God doesn't matter and I matter the most. We live relying on our own strength and our own power. We live as if this Advent season is all about us. And again, God is calling us to repent, to repent of our sins and to rely on Jesus' strength and his power. Now, the good news is that Jesus has already removed the biggest obstacles and boulders on our path to heaven in fact, he has filled in all the valleys and he has destroyed the boulders of sin, death, and the devil. And once more, he did it as the Lamb of God. As the Lamb of God who willingly went to the slaughter when he was hung on a cross. Because there on the cross, he bled and he was cursed for us by becoming sin for us and for the sins of the entire world. There on the cross in the wilderness, Jesus was abandoned by his own father when he cries out, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And there in the wilderness on the cross, Jesus willingly gave up his spirit and he died. Yes, Jesus died, but then on the third day he was raised again to life. Jesus is alive, and now his people are no longer just baptized with water, but also baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's the gift the resurrected Jesus gives to his people. Just as God empowered his people on the first Pentecost with his Holy Spirit, God has empowered us with his Spirit as well. And it happened in our baptism. When we were baptized with water in the word, God's spirit was poured out upon us and God gave us, as I, again, as I said last week, he gave us brand new hearts. And so stones of pride have been removed, boulders of self-righteousness have been bulldozed away and hearts of stone have been replaced with hearts of flesh. And because God's spirit lives in us, then he then moves us when we sin to confess our sins to receive his forgiveness and be sure that we are ready when Jesus comes again because we are his children and we are forgiven. Now, as a result of what God has done for us by his spirit, he empowers us to produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Again, it's not something we do. It's not something we can do on our own. It's only something that God can do through us. 
So what are some of those fruits of faith? Well, John says, tells us a couple of them. He says, a man with two tunics should share with him who has none, and the one who has food should do the same. To the tax collectors, don't collect any more than you are required to. And to the soldiers, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. Notice what all three have in common. They all benefit other people. And all of them are tied to the commandment that Jesus gave us to love one another. To love one another by being content with what we have and, and give to others. To love one another to help those in need. And ultimately, to love one another by being a voice of one calling in the wilderness to people who don't know Jesus. I don't know if you noticed, but in verse 6 of our text, it says, and all mankind will see God's salvation. That is God's will for the entire world. His will is for everyone, no matter who they are, no matter what they've done, to see God's salvation in Jesus Christ. And so just as he used John the Baptist to prepare the way back then, God uses us, his people, to prepare the way for Jesus today. Because there are a lot of people living in the wilderness of their sin. They're li living in the wilderness of guilt and shame. And they need someone to tell them there is a God who loves them. There is a God who has saved them. There is a God who has come down in the person of Jesus to give them new life. And God is using us to tell others about Jesus. To be that voice in the wilderness. So that more and more people would be saved. You know, we have a lot of opportunities to do that, don't we? Especially this time of year. Please pray with me as we ask the Holy Spirit to lead us to people so that we can share Jesus with them so that they might hear God's word and be saved. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that you have removed the boulders of pride and self-righteousness from our lives and that you have smoothed out the path to heaven for us. Lord, we thank you that you have done that through your, the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who came to live for us and die for us and rise again to give us life. And we thank you that you have empowered us by your spirit so that we know that we are yours and that we are forgiven. Lord, we pray just as John the Baptist cried out in the wilderness long ago, we pray that you would help us to cry out in our wilderness that we live in, the wilderness where people are living today in their sin, in their shame, in their guilt so that they would hear about Jesus, so that they would hear your word and be saved. Lord, thank you for using us in this special way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.